Hello, my beautiful Gemini friends, and welcome to your horoscope for May of 2020, and happy, happy birthday. Some of you Geminis are going to be celebrating right here in the first part of May, so happy birthday if that is you, and don't worry, I have more happy birthdays for the Geminis that are coming in June as well. Now, Gemini, this month is an interesting month, I think, because we've got 40% of our planets that are heading into the retrograde path, so what that gives us an immediate indicator of is that you're going to be going back over some things that have already been in your wheelhouse. They've already been here. And even though everybody's going retrograde, so you have a chance to relook at or reconfigure these things, both Mars and your ruling planet Mercury are still in forward motion this month. So I feel like you have just enough space to make some decisions and to also take some actions that really are about making the improvements and the adjustments that need to be there. Now, I do want to caution you before we even jump into this reading. Pluto is a planet in your chart that rules your sixth house, right? That's jobs, that's co-workers, it's health, it's all of these things. Now, Pluto, in the general reading, acting as your health and work planet, he's in retrograde and started that retrograde last month. So I just have this sense, especially starting the month with a full moon, that you really want to be mindful with certain jobs or projects that you do take on this month because maybe you don't have all the facts or something is not as clear as it could be. So I don't want you to get lost in the sauce, but make sure you're really going over those details if you can. And also make sure you go back in and double check on your health, right? You wanna make sure that you're doing the very best for yourself and you don't wanna be overlooking something because you feel like it's totally okay, all right? Okay, let's jump in and talk about what's happening this month. So first and foremost, as we start the month, we've got a full moon happening in the energy of Scorpio. Now this again is gonna light up your sixth house place, which is very much so where we were talking about with Pluto being the ruling energy of Scorpio, we're gonna see this energy kind of happening. But the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So you're going to create a shift here. Now. The full moon in Scorpio is really giving you an abundance of light to say, okay, Gemini, this is what our deepest desires are in this particular area, or this is where we've been struggling in the day-to-day -day hustle, in mundane things, in our thinking. You know, is there a place that you've been having a little bit of a power struggle? Because ultimately, Scorpio is going to show you the deep down, dank and dirty of it so that you can see it release it and transform it. Now, the other thing I think of with the full moon being in Scorpio is that truly you do want to be mindful of the projects you take on. I feel like there's just something very mystique or very mysterious around it this month. And I want you to have absolutely all of the details at your disposal. So make sure that you are doing your double checking kind of work, okay? On the 11th is kind of a busy day. We're actually going to see Mercury making a move into the energy of Gemini. So he's coming home right into your sign. Domicile, the world is good. And we will also see Saturn stepping into its retrograde for this next five months. Now, with Mercury coming home into your sign, you may find yourself like you're thinking, you're quickly, you're like, I am on go. I don't know what's happening, but decisions come on over here, you know? So you could find yourself having a lot of conversations conversation. You could be doing interviews, which is beautiful because we talked a little bit about this job energy over here, but you could also be talking to new health professionals. So whatever it is, just make sure there's some balance and clarity. Okay. But Gemini, this is going to be a nice time for you to communicate, for you to get your brand out there, for you to be seen or to communicate anything that you've been wanting to talk about. You have to think about it as we start this month. We've got Venus, who's also over in your sign, getting ready to retrograde. Then Mercury jumps in here as well. So you could even be talking about... Um, Things with the family, Mercury is also a ruler of your fourth house in your chart in the general. So you could be having conversations with your family. Maybe this full moon in Scorpio um, made some decisions around finances and the family in your daily routine. So you could be doing some expressing or some explaining in this particular area of your life as well. 
Now as Saturn takes its retrograde, it's going to start this retrograde at one degree of Aquarius. So just here in the ninth house where it's been showing you some things, maybe you felt socially or digitally or even in your long range plans and goals, you've had to expand, you've had to get serious in this particular area. You're going to be working on crystallizing this area as Saturn comes back at the end of the year. But then it's also going to step back into the eighth house. So again, this idea that Saturn in this retrograde is taking you back very seriously seriously to say, Gemini, are you being independent? Are you making your own way? Are you standing on your own two feet? What is happening in your joint resources? Does somebody have power over you? Or are you in healthy joint resources to include your sexual relationships, your financial relationships? You don't have money or you don't have energy leaking someplace. This is going to be a time where Saturn is really going to help you clean up what you've already had in your world. You've already seen it. And as he's working on it over this next five months, Months, you're going to crystallize this so that he can leave you good to go in ship shape and ready to move on and start learning some other lessons, okay? Now, on the 13th, we have quite the busy day as well. Mars is going to step forward into the energy of Pisces, and Venus is going to begin this retrograde. Now, as Mars moves into the energy of Pisces, this is going to be at the top of your chart, so lighting up the 10th house space. Now, what this tells me about career for you is point your energies into things that are creative, projects that need to be finished up, things that have a spiritual or in-between-the-worlds kind of nature. Now, if, if you are not a practicing healer, right? Or you're not a practicing tarot reader or something like that. The way that you can interpret that is, you know, did you want to be a psychiatric nurse? Did you want to work in corrections? Did you want to work someplace where there's specialized population? Because Mars is going to be helping you be in action in that way. Now, in the energy of Pisces, it's sometimes really hard to pick the direction that you want to go. You're like, I don't know what I want. And I just need some time to be with that because Mars is also the energy of desire. So if as Mars is here, you don't feel your yourself feeling profoundly moved to fight for what you want and make huge decisions, it's okay. This is as equally useful to finish up things that have been happening and been in your wheelhouse and allow them to come to transition. Now, as Venus begins her retrograde, she's going to begin it at 21 degrees of Gemini and she will end it June 25th at five degrees of Gemini. So solidly in your first house. Now, Venus is going to ask you to relook over these relationships, relook over these finances. What's going on with your children? Your children, especially if you do have children, you may want to pay attention to financial investments around the Venus retrograde because they maybe want to make an investment or something like that and you can maybe help guide them in some way shape or form or you have to go back over expenses with your children or something like that either way venus retrograde is asking us to go back review reevaluate What's the value in this area of your life? Are you shortchanging your value? Gemini, are you demanding what you're worth? You know, are you ready to have relationships in your life? Where is your self-esteem, Gemini? These are big questions to be asking as Venus is retrograde. Now, I will tell you, we typically suggest that during a Venus retrograde, you don't go make some extravagant purchase of something brand new. Now, if you've already been working on the purchase and it comes through during Venus retrograde, just make sure that you can give it back if you don't like it, right? You wanna make sure, because we make these big ticket purchases sometimes during Venus retrograde and then it's like, I don't even like that. Or I bought this couch and it turns out I didn't measure it so it doesn't really fit. Or I entered into this relationship and I don't actually even like you. These are things that are very common during a Venus retrograde because we're switched around and we're looking backwards. If anything comes into your life, just take it nice and slow get the details of what's going on and be patient and you can see in June if it's going to be good enough to stick around in your world if it has that real true Venetian value, okay? On the 14th, Jupiter is going to come into his retrograde. Now, Jupiter is going to begin his retrograde at 27 degrees of Capricorn and he's going to end it at 18 degrees of Capricorn. As Jupiter retrogrades, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal energy for you, Gemini, especially in this eighth house place, for you to go back back over the areas, eighth house things, joint finances, joint resources, your own independence within that intimacy. And this can also be sexual intimacy. This can be the story of the occult and the mystic things in between the worlds, the story of your fear. And the area here as Jupiter reevaluates it is like, are you really free? Right? Um, 
I think a Jupiter retrograde is also phenomenal for us to look at where we've been presenting with overconfidence, even though this is the area that actually needs more work for us. The wisdom and humility of Jupiter says, I, I need help right? I, I don't quite know what I'm doing here, but I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to bring wisdom in. I'm willing to be taught. I'm willing to have expansion. So this is a wonderful time for you to consider those things because through the mistakes that you have made in this eighth house area over this last year, most certainly, you can actually get a lot of healing and move this area forward. So think about that during this Jupiter retrograde and Jupiter will be coming out of retrograde in September, okay? On the 20th, it is birthday time. The sun moves into the energy of Gemini. It is light, heat, life, and vitality. You are motivated. You are shining. Venus, retrograde or not, is still in your sign. So you maybe have a little va va voom to you as well. It helps to beautify and magnify that first house, the body energy. It can also just make us more motivated. Not to mention on the 22nd, we're going to invite in um, a new moon in Gemini. Gemini. So this is a wonderful energy to plant those seeds of intention. What have you been curious about? What have you wanted to do to style yourself or to present yourself a certain way? What identity are you carrying and looking around and wanting to present out to the world? What's the message that you have? You're a messenger, right? What's the message that you have, Gemini? And truly, I think too, with a new moon happening here, um, if you need to take time to just be your curious, easily distracted self. Celebrate that during birthday time. This is a time to really vibe into who and what you are. You are not another zodiac sign, right? You're a compilation of all of them, but this time you happen to be working in Gemini energy. So celebrate that for the good and the challenge that it is and welcome it into your next annual solar year, okay? As we end this month, we're gonna see Mercury, your ruling planet, moving on. He's getting into the energy of Cancer, so beginning to light up your second house. Now, Mercury wants to make decisions. This is an energy of the mind. But in the energy of Cancer, your emotions are very, very attached to the decisions that you're making. And because it's Cancerian energy, I continue to think of this idea of home, right? home and nurturing and supported. Do you feel nurtured? Do you feel supported? And in the area we're looking at is your second house, your finances, your value, your self-esteem. How do you value yourself? How are your creative talents valued? So you may be making some decisions in this particular area of your life um, that help you to increase this. Because cancer is a, a feminine energy as well. I just have this sense that you may be talking to a lot of women for some reason as we're traveling throughout May. So if that's something that comes up for you or you're talking to your family, there's a very family vibe that's up on the table for you this month, Gemini. So whatever that is, if you're looking for freedom, if you're looking for support, you're looking for financial gain, financial gain will actually get a lot better. I believe as we move into June, because your second house will become a house of power at that particular time. So make the decisions to nurture, to be with your emotions, and to uh, don't let your emotions get the best of you as you're making financial decisions, especially because Venus is retrograde. But there has to be sometimes some emotional valence attached to the decisions that we're making with our money that helps us to be a little bit wise, okay? All right, Geminis, I hope that you have liked this video. I look forward to seeing what you think of the new video format. I also hope that you will check out the many collaborations in what I'm now calling the eat and greets on this channel. We've had Brian Coulter, Nadia Shah, Patrick Arundel is coming around, Terrence Gardino. Those ones are coming up fairly quickly here. So I hope you will watch because we're bringing you content through collaboration, which is not just on topics, but we're going to also bring you some skills that you can use in your own astrology practice as well. So like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I absolutely look forward to seeing you guys next month in the next videos. Bye everyone.